All right, Shalom. I'd like to open up by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Kudash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who are well and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopeful elect. And uh, today's lesson is going to be inspired by uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, uh, the first few verses. And pretty much, you know, what this is going to is how, you know, we look, you know, uh, unto Yahweh Shai. Our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai as that main example, right? So, hey, you know, we know that Yahweh Shai went through a lot of things. You know, he was tempted by Satan here and there, right? You know, uh, a lot of our people came up against him, you know, wicked scribes and Pharisees trying to tempt him and use his own uh, words against him, right? But, hey, we know the Lord endured all those things because what? Yahweh Shai saw the bigger picture, right? And also, just like Yahweh Shai saw the bigger picture, we have to see the bigger picture. All right. But uh, without further ado, I'm just start the Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, um, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Right. Because what the scriptures are also going to see, what the scriptures also say, uh, let not your sins weigh you down. Right. Also, hey, that's part of our wall, too, man. Are we going to make certain mistakes? We're going to fall here and there, right? But, hey, knowing that Yahweh Shai, you know, got up on that cross for us, man, right? We got to we gotta believe that we're covered under the blood of Yahweh Shai, right? And then believing so, we have to move forth, right, and not let our mistakes get the best of us, right? Because those, those mistakes we make, those me set up so we can learn from it, all right? It says, and let us run with patience, the race that is set before us, right? Because ultimately, what this is a race of patience, right? Like the scriptures say, uh, the race is not given to the swift, you know, so on and so forth. This is all about patience, right? Ultimately, what we know the word patience is going to suffer. So ultimately, you know, ultimately, what what's being uh, what the Lord is doing, you know, and His truth when He brings us into this wisdom, not the understanding, is testing our ability to suffer, right? And you know, we suffer suffer in manifold of ways, right? Whether uh, uh, you, um, you have to go without certain things, right? Uh, you're dealing with uh, uh, certain, you know, wicked thoughts that demons uh, play your mind with, right? Or whether on the physical, right? You're dealing with bodily ailments, you know, whether it be a headache, some sort of sickness, a stomach ache, so on and so forth, right? All of that is part of suffering and it's truth, right? Uh, verse 2 <clears throat> It says, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and here's the point, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Most High. So, you know, when Yahweh Shai was going you know, through the various trials, tests, and tribulations that he went through in his walk, and ultimately on the cross, man, right, the Lord saw the bigger picture. Right, that's why it says, "Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross." The Lord, the Lord was able to see the kingdom of heaven. Right, the Lord Yahweh was able to see himself being exalted and sit on the right hand side of the heavenly Father Himself. Right, the Lord was able to see Himself inheriting the whole earth, man. Let's read that again, Hebrews chapter twelve, verse two. Looking unto Yahweh the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. Right, and we know Yahweh Shai is getting ready to be exalted in the earth, man. You know, once the Lord returns, right, Yahweh Bashim is getting ready to be exalted in the earth. You know, because what also we know that this destruction, right, is going to magnify the names of Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. All right, but once again, hey, our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, even though he was going through certain things, you know, in his time, his walk, right? Through all those things, he saw the bigger picture. Like the beginning of this verse said, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, right? Looking unto Yahweh Shai, right? We have to see the bigger picture as well. You know, when we're going through certain things, you know, whether it be spiritual lows, you know, because a hey, spiritual lows, you know, will, will come all the time, man, or will come in many different times, man. But oh, me, because what? You know, we in this flesh, all right, so this flesh is gonna tweak here and there, but what well, you gotta revert back to Yahweh Bashim Yashai, 
right? You got you got to remember the bigger picture, right? As our Lord Yahweh Shai did, right? And you know Yahweh Shai, seeing the joy that was set before him, you know he endured everything that came against him. And once again, where is our Lord Yahweh Shai right now? <laughs> Sitting on the right hand side of the heavenly Father. And uh, verse three, it says. Uh, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Because what you had uh, a lot you know, of, of our own people come up against Yahweh Shai, right? You know, whether it be the, the the wicked scribes and Pharisees, you know, which all scribes and Pharisees, you know, weren't wicked. I believe that the book of, of Acts goes into how uh, uh, goes into roughly paraphrasing the sect of Pharisees that believe, right? So, so ultimately, just because someone had the name of a, a scribe or Pharisee doesn't mean they were wicked. Right, even the Apostle Paul himself said he was a Pharisee. Right, but nonetheless, the Lord had wicked scribes and Pharisees coming up against them, trying to uh, twist his words and use them against them. All right, trying to tempt the Lord. Right, and then hey, you got uh, individuals. All right, among our people back then, the ones who said uh, um, we uh um that pretty much the ones that chose Barabbas over Yahushai. Right, and those individuals said what. Let his blood be upon us and our children, and that's a generational curse. But point being, a hey, the Lord Yahweh Shai endured all of that, right? Not once did Yahweh Shai give up, man. Right? Not a flesh was getting to him, right? Because what when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? He was praying to the Heavenly Father for another way, right? And when he didn't get an answer, he, he was pretty much like. Nevertheless, let thy will be done, right? And ultimately, all the sufferings that we're going through are all the will of Yahweh Bashim Hashai, right? And ultimately, it's to build us up, right? You know, pretty much make us uh, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, right? It says, um, at least she be wearied and faint in your minds, right? So ultimately, sometimes <clears throat> when you get down and low in the spirit, and you consider uh, getting weak, man, hey, like the scripture said, and looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, all right? Because ultimately, hey, some, a lot of things that Yahweh Shai went through, man, we probably couldn't, couldn't, couldn't endure, man, all right? And we know Yahweh Shai went through a lot, all right? So when it says faint, <coughs> it says, this is, uh, let's see, faint in the Greek. Strong's G, 1590, Ekluo, Ekluo. It says to loose, unloose, to set free, to dissolve, uh, metaphor, to weaken, right? It says, um, it's a definition A, let's see, to have one strength relax, to be enfeebled through exhaustion, to grow weak, grow weary, be tired out. Right, and ultimately, hey, well, we can't grow weak in the truth, man. Right, because ultimately, you know, we don't want to grow weak to the point where, you know, we bug out and you know, ultimately fall out the truth and forsake the Lord. Right, the scriptures say constantly endure. So, hey, that's letting you know right there that you're constantly, you know, going to go through certain things. Now, every every brother's hell is is uh, different, right, or every member of the elect's hell is different. You now, one, one, one individual's hell might not be as uh, uh, much as the next individual's hell. But the Lord knows each and every single one of our spirits, so the Lord knows what we can and can't handle, right? But no matter who we are, right, you know, when we're going through certain things, we got to see, see the bigger picture, right? We have to see the joy set before us, just like our Lord Yahweh Shai did, right? Like our Lord Yahweh Shai saw the bigger picture, like he saw the joy set before him, Right? All right. This is going to take me to uh, Romans. <coughs> Chapter 8. Let's see. Start at verse 16. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. And if children... Then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Because what? You know, ultimately, all things were created by Yahweh Shai and for Yahweh Shai. Right? Pursuant to the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 1, verse 16 
on down, right? But hey, us being, you know, Yahweh's size little brothers, right? And Lord will would be that elect number. The Lord is going to share his inheritance with us. Hence why we are known as joint heirs, right? It says, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Because what? Like the scriptures say, no servant is greater than his master. So also in this walk, man, trying to follow after Yahweh Shai, you're going to go through some of the same things that Yahweh Shai went through. Not everything that Yahweh Shai went through, right? But some of the same things that Yahweh Shai went through, all right? Verse 18, it says, um, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed and us, now, once again, a, hey, you know, going back to seeing the bigger picture and seeing the joy set before us, because, hey, you know, when we when we feel certain things, when we go through certain spiritual lows or certain sufferings, a, hey, we got to remember the scripture in Romans 18, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the joy that is set before us far outweighs, right, the certain sufferings that we're going through right now. And that's the same mindset that Yahweh Shai applied back then, man, when he was on the scene, when he was facing certain things, right? Our Lord's mindset was that the glory that he would receive, all right, the joy that was set before him will far outweigh uh, some of the certain things that he went through, man. And once again, we have, we got to have the same mindset as our Lord Yahweh Shai. Once again, as Hebrews the 12th chapter said, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, man. Because right, once again, Yahweh Shai is the main example. Right? This is um uh second Corinthians chapter four and um let's see. I'll start of um Verse 16, it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How is that, how is that, uh, um, how, how is our inward man renewed uh, day by day? All right, by the certain sufferings that we endure. All right, let's read this in the NLT. It says, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. So also, hey, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yashai is purifying us, man, you know, day in, day out. You know, through some of the certain afflictions we go through, you know, whether it be uh, spiritual lows. Like right? spiritual lows, man, those are, are, are a test in themselves, right? It's a test to see, you know, whether you're going to uh, 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 fold, man, right? Or whether you're going to stick to Yahweh Bashim Yashai. All right, let's read that again. Second Corinthians four sixteen. For which cause we faint not? Once again, what as you read in, uh, uh, for faint right earlier in Hebrews twelve, right? It meant, it meant to grow weak. So it says, for which cause we faint not, or for which cause uh, we we uh, don't grow weak, right? But though our outward man perish, right? Though our outer man perish is on the on the outside, right? It looks like you know all all all. It looks like straight up suffering, man. All right, cause what it does it doesn't feel good, man. You know, going through certain sufferings, man. It doesn't feel good having certain thoughts pop up in your head, you know, all the time, man. It doesn't feel good, you know, having certain sicknesses. Right? But it says yet the inward man is renewed day by day, right? And ultimately, what? Once again, the Lord is renewing us, right, and uh, purifying us right through those afflictions, man. In verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. So the things we go through, man, is, is light, right, compared to the glory, right, that's going to be revealed within us, man. I think that's also written in the uh, the, the book of First uh, Peter, uh, chapter 4, where it says uh, the, um, um, that the glory which shall be revealed within us. Lord, we get this. You know, roughly paraphrasing the glory that shall be revealed uh, within us far exceeds our afflictions, right? <clears throat> it says, um, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. So ultimately, at the end of the day, man, we're not suffering for no reason, 
right? There's a reason to everything, man. And also, hey, look, we know Yahweh watching me outside. is building us up. Give me one second. Okay, so like, I had a bit of an interruption there. But um, let's read this again. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So ultimately, hey, what? We know that, <clears throat> we know that uh, uh, the glory you know, which shall be revealed within us, and which we, uh, we receive those, um, those uh, immortal bodies, those incorruptible bodies, all right, when we receive salvation, all that is going to far exceed the affliction we went through on this side, right? Verse 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Um, all right, hey, what are the things that are seen, man? All right, the things of this world, right, the affairs of this life, right? So, also, hey, our, our affection, right, is not set on the things of this life, man. Because what better is to come? Right? So let's read that again. Verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Also, what's not seen, man? What's, what's that? The kingdom of heaven. Right? No one has seen the kingdom of heaven. All right? We can imagine it, but the scriptures say in 1 Corinthians 2, that I had not seen nor ear, uh, heard what the Most High had prepared for them that love him. All right? And also, throughout the scriptures, now we can uh, uh, um, imagine, you know, what the kingdom of heaven will look like. But also, the Lord is going to far exceed our imagination. All right? It says, for the things which are seen are temporal. Right? Once again, the affairs of this life, the things of this world. Right? But the things which are not seen are eternal. Right? The kingdom is eternal. Right? Immortality is eternal. Right? Those incorruptible bodies that we will receive, Lord, will be that elect number, are eternal. Salvation will be eternal. All right? So once again, when we're going through certain things, you know, once again, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith. Right? As Yahweh Shai saw the joy that was set before him and endured the cross. Right? We have to see the joy that is set before us. And endure our own crosses. Right? Let's see. Let's see uh what what let's see what that first Peter says. Lord is why I didn't butcher it. Uh let's see. Uh Yo, let's just read it. First Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial was to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right? So when we go through certain things, it's a fiery trial, man. That's what they're known as, fiery trials. And we're not supposed to think it's strange. Right? Because well, why is that? Because we're supposed to go through certain things. Right? As Sirach the second chapter tells us, when thou comes to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. Right? Because what? The Lord, the Lord uh, weighs us you know, by our actions, right? The Lord is not doing a lip service because, you know, you got individuals who say, you know, that, that they love the Lord, this, that, and the other, right? But ultimately, hey, Yahweh by my side, right? It's proven who truly lo loves him, right? Ultimately, the Lord puts his, his servants through various different trials, tests, and tribulations to prove them, right? So ultimately, hey, that's how the Lord proves you, right? Through those fiery trials, man, because what the scripture says in, um, um, let's see, Isaiah, uh, 48 and 10, it says, behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction, right? So that fire or that heat we catch and in truth, man, is likened unto affliction, right? So going back to first Peter. Four and um, uh, four and uh, thirteen it says, but rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, 
you may be glad also with ex- with exceeding joy. Because, hey, we know when your house appears, hey, that's it, man. Right? The Lord is coming to, to do away with, with all hurt pertain to the house of Israel, all affliction pertains to the house of Israel. Like the scriptures say, the Lord is going to wipe away all tears in that day. All right? So, also, hey, this this is also the joy that is said before us, man, the appearing of Yahweh shot. Right? And we also and we pray that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai keep his Holy Spirit upon us so that we can make it to the appearing of Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. All right? And also, in the Lord's will, we, we be that elect number, man. Cause hey, that that's gonna be that's gonna be a, a a joyous day, you know, for the elect of the nation of Israel, and which I hope to be a part of, as well as my fellow brethren, right, and those of you out there who may be watching, right, of the household of faith, right. That's going to be a joyous day, knowing that the Lord is about to destroy this this uh world world of wickedness. Cause hey, that that's part of the affliction too, right. Uh, living in a, a, a wicked world or a wicked rulership, right? And trying to be righteous, right? Because what all around you is wickedness, right? And those, hey, us of the whole free lady, we hate wickedness, man, right? And also, hey, that's also part of the joy, knowing that the Lord is going to do away with this wicked kingdom, right? And set up a rulership or a new earth and new heavens wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. Right, so once again, we got to see the bigger picture, man, just like our Lord Yahweh Shai did. All right, <clears throat> uh, let's see, let's hit the apocrypha real quick. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3. Uh, let's see. We'll start at uh, verse, uh, let's see. We'll read verses 4 through, well, let's see what the Spirit takes me. It was in Solomon chapter 3, beginning in verse 4. It says, for though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Because what, you know, us being punished in the sight of men, right? The world doesn't understand, you know, why we go through certain things, man. Right? They think we're going through certain things, you know, just because, but... Us and then know those us that have this understanding, we understand that Yahweh Bashmi Asha is building us up through these various different chastisements, afflictions, trials, and tribulations. All right. It says, For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Right. So through all the spiritual loads we go through, through through, through all all the the, 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 the fucked up the thoughts that Satan puts in our head, you know, through all the things we endure, man, all right? Our hope is full of immortality, man. You know, because hey, you know, hey, hey, those those afflictions can hit you, man. But you always gotta have the thought in the back of your head. It gets better than this, right? In verse five, and having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded, right? Because what well, once again, back in Corinthians, Second Corinthians four, right? This is uh, referred to as a light affliction. Why? Because what? The glory that we're going to receive, Lord, will be that elect. Right? And first and foremost, our Lord Yahweh has to receive his glory. Right? And after our Lord Yahweh receives his glory, the glory that's going to be bestowed upon his elect. Right? <coughs> the glory that's going to be bestowed upon his elect is going to far outweigh the sufferings that any of the elect went through. Right? It says, um, for Yahweh proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace has he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. Right? Because also when we go out there on the highways and byways, you know, and also in this truth in general, what well, we give up our bodies as a living sacrifice, man. You know? Verse, um, verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. So in a time of judgment, man, hey, Yahweh Bashmi Ashai is going to raise up his men with spiritual power, man. Right? And the Lord is going to use his men, right, to carry out judgment. Like I said in Jeremiah 50, uh, with thee will I break in pieces the horse, the horse and his rider. Right? 
a also in the book of Isaiah it says what I have made thee a, a, a sharp instrument with threshing teeth roughly paraphrasing right so the Lord is going to raise up his men with that spiritual power that's also part of the joy that's said before us man receiving that spiritual power in verse 8 they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and the, their Lord shall reign forever and ultimately what like the scripture saying Psalms 2 asking me and I should give thee the heathen for thine inheritance right now first, first and foremost our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to endure the whole earth right he's going to have a, a heathen subject unto him right but hey us being a, a little brothers of Yahweh Shai thus make us joint heirs with them the lord is going to share his spoils with us man and that's also part of the joy that's said before us you know having the heathens under our feet man complete rulership and dominion in verse 9 it says they that put the trust in him shall understand the truth and such as be faithful and love shall abide with him all right so ultimate aid you know we have the truth we have this wisdom knowledge understanding and we understand this Right, because hey, we trust in Yahweh Bashmi Ashai. Right? It says, and such as be faithful and love shall abide with them. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. Right? So ultimately, hey, the Lord got his elect no matter what. You know, even though you know the elect is going through certain things, man. Right, the Lord got his elect even through that. Because what the scriptures say, uh 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 for Yahweh Bashmi Asai knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, but he reserved the wicked until the day of judgment, roughly paraphrasing. So, you know, the things that you know we go through, man, the Lord knows we can handle it. All right, as the scripture says, the Lord's not going to put a more in us than we can handle. All right, we just got to have faith that Yahweh Bashmi Asai is going to get us through those certain things. And um, we'll probably end off here in the uh, second Ezra 7 if nothing else comes to mind. Um, but we'll start from the top. This is uh Second Ezra chapter seven, uh, beginning in verse one. It says, "And when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the nights before, and he said unto me, Up, Ezra, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. And I said, Speak on, my power. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place, that it might be deep." And great, but put the case, but put the case, the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea and look to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? So pretty much, you know what, second, that is the seventh chapter is going into in the beginning, right? As a, as a long, hard road that leads to the kingdom of heaven. Right, that broad, that broad place that this is going into, man. The broad place is the kingdom of heaven, but you got to go through the narrow first. Also, what's the narrow? I right, know the Lord Yahweh Shai said, "NTN through the straight gate." All right, so that narrow is the straight gate, and we know the word "straight" is going to a position of difficulty, right? Because once again, as Scripture said, "When thou comes to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation." So the Lord is letting you know right there that coming to this truth, coming to this wisdom, not to understand it, it's not going to be no easy cakewalk, right? <laughs> You're going to have demons attacking you from every angle, whether it be uh, through your mind or through people, right? You're going to go through certain bodily afflictions, you know? But, hey, all these sufferings are, are going to lead to the kingdom. Uh, verse 6, it says, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of good things. Right, once again, talking about the kingdom of heaven is what we're going to have a uh, everlasting rulership and dominion. Right? We're going to have uh, uh, slaves, right, servants of the heathen, right? And we're going to have uh, eternal riches, right, those immortal bodies, you know, and various other blessings, right? In verse 7, it says, The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on our on the right hand and on the left a deep water. So you don't wanna you don't wanna move to the left or to the right. You wanna stay on a straight and narrow path that Yahweh Bashmi Ashai has set before you. All right, cause hey, one just just one false move could get you out of there. Alright? So that's why it's best you know, to try to the best of our ability 
to stay on that straight and narrow. Because what we know, hey, we in this flesh, so we want to make certain mistakes at times. But the goal is to make is is to not uh is to offend less, right? As the scriptures say, because what you know, once again, due to this flesh, we're going to mess up at certain times. Um, verse eight, it says um, <coughs> and um, and only one path between them, even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. No, and that's why scriptures say, "Work out uh, thy own salvation with fear and trembling." Or if we're paraphrasing, because what? Right at the end of the day, when it comes to our individual walks, it's between uh, Yahweh watching outside and us, man. Right. Ultimately, once again, every brother's hell is not the same. So ultimately, the Lord has a. Uh, um. The Lord has a custom hill, all right, set up for each and every individual of the elect, all right? Verse 9, it says, If this city were now given to a man for an inheritance, if he if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive his inheritance? And that's why the scriptures say, through much tribulation, must we enter into the kingdom of the Most High, because what? No, the Lord, he's not just going to give the kingdom as a handout, right? The Lord is going to prove you first to see if you're worthy to partake in the kingdom, man. Right? So, I mean, just like our Lord Yahweh Shai had to go through these various different sufferings, right? To sit on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father and to receive His glory, all right? We got to go through certain sufferings, right? In order to receive that desired glory, right? So, once again, you know, like the point of this lesson being looking unto Yahweh Shai. The author and finisher of our faith, who uh, who uh, saw the joy set before him, endured the cross. All right. So once again, just like Yahweh Shai saw the bigger picture, all right, through all his sufferings, we have to see the bigger picture, the, the bigger picture through certain sufferings, man. All right. So Lord's of this lesson was edifying to the body. I would like to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakudash. The by honesty of the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, who rule well, and preach the truth and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopeful neglect. And Lord is us in the next lesson. Until then, shalom.